Welcome to Here Comes the Boom, a new KSR and KSR Plus recruiting podcast. We've got a really special episode for you today. My name is Jacob Polachek, a writer with KSR Plus. Well, it's the July live period. We just had the Adidas 3 SSB finals. Uh, Peach Jam is underway. Jack Pilgrim and I will be there starting on Thursday and we'll be there through Sunday. So we're going to be talking today about a lot of topics. Kentucky is yet to land its first commit in the 2025 class. So we'll be running through all their targets, who set up official visits, who could set up official visits, and more. Excited to be here. And let's get into the show. So let's start by talking about some of the, the targets that were at the three SSB Adidas finals. The big name from there is Darren Peterson. Uh, He's expected to visit Kentucky right now. Kansas is the big, the biggest contender for Darren. Uh, I talked to his father earlier this month, and he said that he's planning to take an official visit to Ohio State at the beginning of August, and then Kentucky is another one of the schools that he plans to visit sometime in August and September. Uh, but Kansas is really making a push there. They already got an official visit from him, and I'm really not sure if he's going to make it to Kentucky's campus for an official visit before making a decision. His dad told me that uh, he is likely to make a decision sooner rather than later. That makes me believe that a commitment could be coming as soon as right after that Ohio State visit in early August. So he's a name that I'm watching. I think that we'll see if he gets on campus. If he gets on campus, we can go from there, but I don't love Kentucky's chances there. Um, looking further down the line, Nate, amen, he was a name that has just blown up this summer, and he's got a long list of schools after him, UNC, Duke, Virginia, those are three of the big ones right there, but Kentucky has offered, they plan to get him on campus for an official visit, I would expect now with the unlimited official visit rules, uh, that he gets, he takes around seven to eight official visits, and Kentucky I don't, I wouldn't say Kentucky's the favorite at this point, but I think they're firmly in the conversation for Nate Amen. Uh, the, the other name, Malachi Moreno, obviously an in-state kid here from the state of Kentucky, goes to Great Crossing. Uh, as reported by Zach Gagan, he'll be visiting Kentucky for Big Blue Madness. I like where Kentucky stands with him. Uh, we'll talk a little more about what they plan to do at that center position, uh, but I think that he is probably their top target um, at the five spot. A few other names, Michael Brown, um, he had a really good performance from what uh, was reported by Brandon Ramsey, and he's a name that's kind of gone under the radar uh, as far as the Kentucky interest in this 2025 class, but I think that Kentucky really likes him. Uh, the last guy I want to talk about is Caden Magwood, who – Kentucky has had a relationship with for a long time. Uh, he's from Louisville originally, so uh, he has that Kentucky connection. But the staff has not talked to him about an official visit yet, so we'll see where he goes from there. Um, but that's those are the main targets that were at the Adidas 3 SSB. And now we'll, let's talk about some official visits that we have coming up. All right, uh, talking about some official visits, uh, Kentucky's already set a few official visits, uh, namely Tunde Yesifu, who will be on campus on August 1st or August 2nd. Uh, that's a big name for Kentucky. He's a th he's plays the small forward position. I know Kentucky's got a lot of guys that they're going after at that small forward position, um, but he's a, he's a name that has already set an official visit, and we expect to see him on campus soon. We already talked about Darren Peterson. Right now, talking to his dad, Kentucky is supposed to get an official visit. I'm not sure if they end up getting one. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see with that. AJ Dibansa, he's someone I want to talk about who I haven't brought up yet. Number one player in the country. He's been probably the, the best high school basketball player for the last couple of years. Um, he's expected to cut his list to around seven schools the end of July, I believe Kentucky will be on that list. And from there, uh, he'll be taking official visits in the fall with a decision decision expected around the new year. 
Another guy on the Puma circuit, Chris Sinak, he's someone who plays the five position. Kentucky's – he might be Kentucky – or he plays the four position, excuse me. He might be Kentucky's top target at the four position. I'm told that Kentucky expects to get him on campus for an official visit sometime in the fall. I don't believe he said any official visits yet, so that should come sometime soon. Michael Brown, we talked about him a little bit. Kentucky expects to get him on an official visit. He's talked to me multiple times saying he's, he plans to get on a Zoom with the staff at the end of the summer, set an official visit, and get on campus. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. A Caden Lewis, he's someone that just included Kentucky on his list. I'm expecting him to get on campus in October. And Eric Reby, the last guy I want to talk about, he's expected – to set an official visit to Kentucky and make his decision sometime around the start of the school year. To be joined now by on threes national recruiting analyst Jamie Shaw. We just had the Adidas 3 SSB finals wrapping up and now we've got Nike Peach Jam going on. So uh, Jamie, I want to start by asking you about some of these guys that Kentucky's going after. Um, you just you were just at 3 SSB. Let's start with Darren Peterson. Um, what impresses you the most about his game? Well, Peterson had an absolutely fantastic week, po quite possibly the best player um, in the entire event. Um, what really struck me about his game this week was the pace in which he plays at. Um, nothing's rushed with him. Uh, he's able to get uh, to every spot that he wants to on the floor. Um, and he plays a really cerebral game with the ball in his hands. Um, while, while he's probing the defense, he gets it on his hips. You're not able to knock him off, off of uh, balance with his with contact uh, because of the core strength and the base that he plays on. Um, and he draws fouls, gets to the free throw line. He had multiple games where he went to the free throw line 20 plus times. Um, he, he just plays at such a, an excellent pace, never rushed, and, and always able to attack the defenses um, in, in a very efficient manner and uh, get a lot of stuff done. And then we've got another guy on the three SSB circuit that Kentucky's going after, Nate Ament. Uh, I know he's been a big stock riser this summer. What have you seen from his game, and where do you think uh, he's improved to really put himself into this five-star status? Sure, yeah. Uh, Nate Ament's somebody that's, uh, I mean, at all three, we've had him in the top, uh, top 10 or 15 for six or so months now. Um, you know, and it's always kind of based on his size and his skill set. I mean, he kind of fits into everything that they're looking for at the highest levels. There's multiple positional outcomes, um, archetypes that he could still move into. Uh, the ceiling is immense with him, uh, starting with the six foot nine frame, great length, comfortable on the ball. He's able to create uh, self create offense, knock down shots, really good passer. Um, what's really taking his game to the next level. Um, over this past few months, um, aside from all of the, the skill and everything that initially put him in the top 10 for us, um, what's moving him higher is the toughness. Now he's grabbing 10 plus rebounds every single game. He's blocking three and four shots a game, uh, really getting after it on the defensive end of the floor, becoming a true two way player. Um, and that opens up um, even more positional archetypes as he continues to move forward um, as to what he could be at the end of the day. Um, raising the ceiling of his upside. And I know you've been close to his recruitment. Um, we're talking about him because he's got that Kentucky offer, but what are some of the main schools involved with him? Well, he, his recruitment is nowhere close to being done. I'm being told that he's probably going to look to take about 10 official visits um, throughout the process. Um, and he has not taken one yet. So um, as he comes to an end here with his AAU season, uh, we'll start to see him look toward um getting uh, into those official visits and announcing those official visits um, with Kentucky, um, as I'm told, being one of them. And then I want to talk about the in-state guy on the three SSB circuit with Malachi Moreno. Um, I know that a lot of people in Kentucky have talked about the improvement that he's shown in his game over the last few years. And um, now he's, I believe, the number one ranked center in the country. So what stands out to you about his game? What are his greatest strengths? Well, what initially moved him up to that kind of status, the size mixed with kind of the fluidity that he has. He's got really good hands, and he moves really well, able to run the floor. Um, he's able to kind of open his hips and slide a little bit, uh, move laterally as well as, uh, you know, vertically. Um, he 
just this past week, he had a head-to-head matchup yesterday against Koa Pete, uh, where Malachi and his Indiana League team won the game. Malachi was the best player on the floor. Uh, he went for 21 and 16, I believe, in the win, 16 rebounds. That's coming off of a game the day before where he also had 20 plus and 15 plus, 20 plus points, 15 plus rebounds in the playoffs of the three SSP championships. Um, his next steps, he's got to create kind of a little bit more of a back to the basket presence. Um, got to be able to, you know, dump the ball down to him on the floor and uh, on the post and create an offensive play. But his athletic gifts are so unique, especially in this class. Being legit seven foot, good hands, tracks the ball very well. He runs and moves well. Um, and he's already producing at a pretty high rate. Um, the upside for him, again, just like uh, we were talking about with the men, the upside of Malachi Moreno is pretty high. And we're seeing consistent production uh, come out of him, uh, you know, on big stages. And I know he's got a pretty big list of schools right now. Um, Zach Gagan of KSR just reported that he'll be visiting for Kentucky for his official visit um, for Big Blue Madness. So uh, what are some of the, the other schools that are in contention for him? Another school to watch out for him is Indiana. Um, he's got a few more schools on his list as well. Mike Woodson was front and center uh, for multiple games uh, for Malachi as well as, well as Mark Pope. Um, talking to Zach yesterday, it sounded like Mark um, Pope kind of changed his schedule around so he can stay and watch the Koa Pete matchup uh, yesterday where Malachi went for you know 21 and 16 uh, in the game. But um, th- those are two, two of the schools um, to definitely watch out for when it comes to uh, Moreno's recruitment. Now I want to move on to talk about some guys on the Nike EYBL with uh, Peach Jam heating up right now. So I know the number one player in the country, AJ Dibansa, he's got a lot of schools on his trail right now. Um, everyone in the country seems like wants him. So what makes him the number one player in the country? On a, on a court, um, you know, he, he's been the number one player um, – since he reclassed up to 2025, when he was in 2026, he was the number one player. Um, I put out last year when, when Cooper Flagg was still in high school and all that type of stuff that AJ Dibansa was the number one recruit in high school basketball period overall, um, and nothing's changed with that. Uh, but what really put that over the top was this past month at the USA Basketball during the, uh, during the training camp sessions of it. On a team, on a court filled with, with alpha players with five stars and um, all that type of stuff, it was very clear who the best player, the alpha, was on the floor. Um, and that was A.J. Dibansa with his six foot eight or so frame, length, ability to self-create, get into the mid-range, knock down shots, attack all the way toward the basket. Uh, the, the vocal nature that he has, his ability to defend, the athleticism, um, the frame. And he continues to get better. Um, and, and he's still got some ceiling to grow into as he continues to iron out the three-point jump shot um, and all that uh, improve upon. So... Um, he's just, he's just, if you were to create a player and give him attributes, like in a video game, um, a lot of it would look very similar to what AJ Dabansa has naturally. I know it seems like he's got a pretty wide open recruitment right now. I believe his dad said that he'll be cutting his list to around six or seven schools uh, at the end of this month as they take official visits in the fall. So who are some of the schools in contention for him? Well, he's taken two official visits. You got USC, you got Auburn. Uh, he's taken a visit to BYU recently as well after moving to Utah Prep, which is about uh, 45 minutes to an hour up the road. Uh, Kentucky's uh, been talked to there. You got UConn, you got Alabama schools have been talked about. Um, not a lot of, uh, you know, not, not a lot of schools being dropped, not a lot of conversations had and all that type of stuff. Um, but those are some of the schools that have been linked to AJ. Uh, throughout the process. And then now with Peach Jam, we're just a couple weeks away from Kentucky hosting Tunde Yesifu for his official visit. He'll be on campus. I believe that's August 1st or August 2nd. So um, what do you see from his game? And uh, I know that he's right in that five-star range. So, um, yeah, what what makes him the player he is? It's the consistent production. He just goes out and consistently finds production, whether that's on defense, whether that's rebounding, whether that's attacking the rim and putting pressure um, on the paint, um, whether that's setting up teammates, whatever it is. Um, he lends a lot of very positive production to the game. 
in every setting, no matter it's the high school, no matter it's camp, no matter it's AAU, um, wherever it is, Tuna Yosefu continues to be one of the most productive players on every floor that he walks on. And who are some of the main competitors to Kentucky for him? Um, a school that's been talked about a lot with him is Arizona. Um, a couple out west schools, uh, along with Arizona, uh, the, the California schools, uh, UCLA, um, have been long talked about with him as well. Um, and then you have the Kentucky popping up. Uh, Kansas uh, has made a run at him uh, recently as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see where he gets on campus at, what the, what the visits look like, and kind of at the timeline, what timeline comes about for his recruitment. I want to ask you about is Lexington native Jasper Johnson. What have you seen in his game this summer, and what are your overall thoughts on the way he plays? Well, the thing with Jasper is the shooting. Uh, he, he's a he's a really uh, can be possibly electric shooter. Um, with what he does, you just went out. Okay. You want to just keep going, and we can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Can, so just just talk about his game, and we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Uh, the thing about Jasper Johnson that, that really uh, I'm high on is the shooting. Uh, the shot making potential is very high with him. He's got deep range. He's got great frame length, um, and he plays with a lot of confidence. Uh, next steps for him is just continuing to um, get the footwork down, get the balance points down, figure out his spots on the floor, how to get to them most efficiently, um, and let it fly. But when he gets going, um, he can really uh, ring in a lot of points with uh, having the shooting kind of being his superpower uh, that he's based his game around. And then if you want to just talk about the main schools involved, we can probably use my original question and and then just put yours after your answer. Yep. After. And if you want to use the original uh, my the original my description as well, whichever one you think sounds better. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, what are what are the schools involved besides Kentucky? <laughs> yeah, so uh, in his recruitment, obviously you have Kentucky there. Um, two other schools that seem to be prioritizing. Uh, him as well are Alabama, UNC. Um, I know at last night's EYBL game, Joe Tipton reported uh, Hubert Davis was there watching. Again today, uh, he reports, uh, Joe does, that uh, Hubert Davis and Nate Oates are both there watching. Uh, so I, I would expect those three schools, Kentucky, Alabama, UNC, uh, to be involved with Jasper Johnson um, as, he, uh, as his recruitment uh, continues forward. So now let's get into the KS board conversation of the week. And what else could it be but Brandon Ramsey and Zach Gagan's three SSB championship live thread. Looking at that, they provided updates minute by minute on who Kentucky was watching, who'd they go after, uh, and who could be setting some visits coming up soon. Um, some highlights in there. Braylon Mullins had a really good performance in front of Coach Hope and J Coach Jason Hart. Uh, you had... Michael Brown putting up a really good performance. J.J. Mandiquit, a player that's from Utah that staff is very familiar with. And then Darren Peterson. He just continues to do it. He had a 26-point, nine-rebound, five-assist game in front of the staff. Just such a great player, and it makes sense why he's a top three player in the country. Um, Kate Magwood, who, like I said earlier, Kentucky hasn't pushed that hard with. But with the performance he had there, we could be seeing a visit soon. So that's all we have for KS Board Conversation of the Week. Now let's go into the final thought. The final thought is Pete Sham is going to be very talented. We've got a wide list of targets right now for Kentucky basketball in this 2025 class. They're Unlike many other staffs, they haven't had the full year to narrow down their list of who they're pursuing this 2025 class. So they've had to cast a wide net. Now with a few EYBL and 3SSB and Puma sessions out there, they started to narrow down their list a little bit. I expect to see that even more at Peach Jam. And from there, starting to see some official visits and then some commitments. Right, and then should, should I do like a wrap or something? Like that? Thanks for watching today. Be sure to go to KSR Plus and the KS Board for live updates from me, Jack Pilgrim, Brandon Ramsey, throughout all of Peach Jam. We'll be back after Peach Jam with full updates and another show.
This show is going to be all things Kentucky basketball recruiting. So make sure to go on the KS board and tell me exactly what you want to see out of this show. What questions do you have? We'll see you next time. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again soon.